Those of us who do a lot of documentary work or landscape work often spend a lot of time driving out in the country in, in unfamiliar places in rural areas. And so you have to have a way of finding out where you're going and not getting yourself lost. And today a lot of people would depend on GPS units in their cars or on their cell phones or on their tablets. And I really don't like to use those. I like to use a traditional paper map. And the reason why is because I've got a, I've got a GPS on my Samsung tablet. And most of the time it works alright, but there's been a lot of times where I've been driving someplace and all of a sudden I just fall off the map because it's gotten out of the area that's been downloaded to it. Or um, the map isn't accurate and it's showing, it's showing stuff that's not there, or I'm seeing stuff that's not, being, that's not showing on the map on, on the tablet. Um, so what I like to use is a, is a traditional paper map. Well, the problem is, is that most maps that are sold commercially are designed for people who are traveling from place to place, and they're not really interested in showing you the country roads or the, the back roads. They're showing you the highways and the main roads that connect the towns and cities. And a lot of times if you look at these maps, you'll see small towns will be marked by just a little dot, and there's, there'll be a dot on the map that has the name of some town next to it. Now that dot, when you get to it, may be a town that has, you know, ten roads on it and, you know, lots of stuff going on there, people living there, businesses and whatnot, but all you see on the map is a little dot. Um, and so I like to have something that's a little bit more accurate. And fortunately for us, at least here in the United States, is that the most accurate maps that you can get, I think the very best maps you can get, are available to you absolutely free thanks to our government. Um, for probably 150 years or more now, the U.S. Geological Survey, which is an agency of the U.S. government, has been producing topographic maps of every part of the United States of America. And a topographic map is a more detailed form of map that shows not just things like roads and streets and towns and cities and highways, but it also shows things like contour lines showing the elevation of the land. So you can see where there's, where there's uh, mountains and valleys and, and hills and such like that, especially in places that actually have those things, unlike northern Indiana where I live. But, um, these maps are extremely accurate and they update them every few years. And in the past when you wanted one of these maps you had to buy them. The government would sell them to you. They'd, you'd send them the money for it and they'd print out the maps for the areas that you request and they'd send them to you. Well you can still get them like that. They cost about, uh, I think it's about $15 for each individual map. But you don't have to buy them like that. You can download every single one of them that they produce totally free off the U.S. Geological Survey's website. And this is uh, a couple of the maps that I've downloaded and printed. This is for this is um, for an area that's south of Fort Wayne, Indiana, which is the city where I live in. This is a rural area that's south of the city. Uh, now you can see this map is really huge, and you're probably wondering why I printed it that big. Well, that's the actual size of the maps that the government produces. If you pay them to send you one of them, they're going to send you a sheet of paper this big. And if you have um, if you have a large format printer, and the original size of this is about 22 inches by 29 inches, so if you have a printer that's capable of printing this big, you can print the full size ones yourself. Now, my own printer is not that big. I have a printer that does prints up to 13 by 19 inch paper. So what you can do is, if you have a smaller printer like that, is you can you can open the map up in Photoshop and cut it into four sections because you can you can print this on four 11 by 17 pieces of paper and tape them together, which is how I did this one. And you can get 11 by 17 paper in just plain old ordinary copy machine sort of paper really inexpensively. I bought a pack of 500 sheets of it at Office Depot for about $19. So it's not terribly expensive stuff. A lot cheaper than most inkjet paper. But it, you don't need fancy inkjet paper for these because they're just line drawings basically. So regular ordinary cheap plain paper works 100% well for them. You don't need to buy the special expensive inkjet paper we use for our photographs. Now if we look at... Um, if we look at this up close, we can see there's an incredible amount of detail in these maps, which is why they're, which is why they're originally printed so large, so that you can see that, that incredible amount of detail in them. Now if we look at the map here, we can see, I'm zooming in on a small town called Yoder. Yoder is a little small town a few miles south of the city of Fort Wayne, and if you look at most maps, if they even show Yoder at all, you're going to see nothing but a little dot with the name next to it. But you can see here on the USGS topographic map, that there's actually several small streets here in the town. And um, you can see a little bit of the geography around it. You can see there's a couple little ponds nearby. Um, there's a railroad track that runs through it, which is what this line right here is. And so these, these give you a lot more detail than you get from a normal map. You can see this uh, um, 
I'm having a hard time coordinating my finger with the uh, camera lens. You see the, these little green areas here? What these denote is forested areas. Um, if the green area has as this one does, see how they look like they have little plants growing in them? That means it's a, that means it's like a marshy area, like a swampy area, which there's a lot of that in northeast Indiana. Almost all of northeast Indiana, the area around the city of Fort Wayne, was up until about 120 years ago all swampland. And starting in, I think in the 1880s, maybe 1870s, um, all that swampland for the most part was drained to make way for farmland. Um, the, uh, the brown lines here you can see that those are contour lines that show you the uh, contours of the land. Some of them have elevation numbers on them, so you can so you can see how the elevation changes from one place to another. Um, if we look at um, this one here, is um, one that shows part of the city of Fort Wayne. Now this area right here, you can see there's lots of contour lines bunched together, which means that there's a that means it's either a drop off like a cliff or a very um, a very sheer mountain face. What this actually is, and if you see it close enough to read the actual contour numbers, you'll see that it's actually decreasing in elevation as you go inward. So it's basically a big hole in the ground. That's a stone quarry, a limestone quarry. And so this even shows man-made features that have changed the land. So you can see the, the big hole in the ground here. And this is about, this is almost 300 feet deep. It's a huge hole. And it's about half a mile across. Um, Another thing you can see over here is there's uh, this uh, this hill right here. That's actually that's Fort Wayne's uh, that's Fort Wayne City Dump. That's the landfill where all our trash goes, and it's a really high hill. It's um, it's over 100 feet tall, I think. It's almost like a mountain in and of itself, just full of trash. So even man-made things that have altered the land are shown on these maps. And this is something this kind of detail, like this the trash dump mountain or the stone quarry hole. You won't find these on commercially produced lab, on produ commercially produced maps. Um, now you're probably thinking, well, why do I need this gigantic map? Though I can't carry this out in the field with me and try to read this in my car or whatever. And and that's true. And I'm, if you really need this level of detail, you can always print them this big and fold them up smaller and just look at sections of it. But there is an easier way. And because you can download, when you download these, you get a PDF file. And you can open that PDF file in Photoshop, and you can resize it to any size you want and make a smaller version. So here I have the same Fort Wayne map, the one we were just looking at. This is the full-size version. I have that same map printed on an 11 by 17 sheet of paper. And the entire map fits on there, and it's it's half the size. Well, it's one-fourth one fourth the size as far as the... Total, the total area of paper used, but it's one half size measured linearly. So the width is one half the width and one half the height of the full size map. And this is a much more convenient size because this is one that's small if you can sit on the seat next to you when you're driving and look at it if you need to, or you can fold it up and stick it in your camera bag. And this still shows a fairly large area. This is showing the western edge of the city of Fort Wayne, which is a you know, city of 250,000 people. Um, it shows there's quite a lot going on here, but it still shows a considerable level of detail. And so this is how I usually print these for my for my own use. Uh, um, I actually only printed the really large ones here just to make the video so you guys can see what the full size um, topographic maps look like. But they're not something I really ever use myself. Now what I've done is I've made myself a book, a little atlas of sorts, and. The maps that the government produces, um, these cover an area what they call, these are what they call a seven and a half minute map. And what that is, is if you look at a map of the world, you'll see the latitude and longitude lines. Um, each degree of latitude and each degree of longitude actually covers a pretty wide geographic area. Um, a degree can be subdivided into smaller units called minutes. There's 60 minutes in a degree. And so these seven and a half minute maps that the government produces cover, you know, seven and a half minutes of width and seven and a half minutes of, of height of latitude and longitude. And even just, you, you know, there's 60 minutes in a degree, so this is only seven and a half minutes, which is a much smaller area than a degree, but it still covers a fairly large area. Um, 
they call the government calls these maps these seven and a half minute by seven and a half minute maps. They call them quadrangles, and each quadrangle has a name. That's that's a name that comes from a geographic location within that area. Usually, the name of a town or city. So this one is called the Fort Wayne West quadrangle, and the name of each one is printed in the lower right corner. And you'll see also there's a date which shows you the last time it was updated. And the 2016 versions, I believe, are the latest ones of all of them right now, even though we're in the middle of 2017. This is the current version of the 2016 ones. They, only, they, get, they get updated, I think, every couple of years. So um, you see that you'll see the name of the quadrangle, the date. You'll see here um, showing the names of the ones that surround it. So if you're looking at this map and you want to find something that's, that's just off that map on the next one, then you can find here, you know, to the west of it would be the Arcola Quadrangle. To the east of it is Fort Wayne East. Directly to the south is Ossian, which is the Ossian's the other one I just that I showed you originally, the very first large one I had. That's called the Ossian Quadrangle, which is the one directly south of Fort Wayne. And all this information is really convenient because if you're looking through my little book I printed out here, and I've got over 200 of these maps that I printed of most of northeast Indiana and part of part other parts of the state too where I photographed. If I open up one of the pages on here and I'm looking for something and I need to find the next one, I've got them, I put them in here in alphabetical order to make them easier for me to find, but I can use this little diagram here to see what the next one I need to look up is if I'm going from one map to the next as I travel. Um, you get the map scale here. These are 1 to 24,000 maps which means means one inch on the map means is 24,000 inches in the real world. If you print them half size to make the little ones like I've put in my little book here, then you're actually getting a 1 to 48,000 size scale. So one inch on the maps in here is 48,000 inches in the real world. Um, see here, it says produced by the U.S. Geological Survey. Um, The, this little diagram here um, shows you um, the amount of deviation for the magnetic north pole. If you're using a magnetic compass, which I do, I, I think these are fascinating instruments even though most people consider them to be outdated. Um, if you're using a magnetic compass, a lot of people don't realize that the needle on a compass does not point toward north. We think it points toward geographic north, which is the north pole. But what it really points to is the magnetic North Pole, which is not the same location as the geographic North Pole. The magnetic North Pole right now is in, nor is in, is in northern Canada in between a couple of the islands that are off the northern coast of Canada. It's about a thousand miles away from the geographic North Pole. And so because the needle is pointing at that North Pole and not the geographic one, you have to have a little bit of correction that you put into your, to your compass readings to get accurate directional readings. And the amount of correction depends on where you're at geographically because different parts of the country have a different amount of, of variance. And the, the, that difference between the geographic and the magnetic North Pole is called declination. And so this tells you the amount. And in the Fort Wayne West Quadrangle, the declination is 5 degrees and 36 minutes. So basically 5.5 degrees to the west. So what that means is your compass needle is actually pointing 5.5 degrees west of true north if you're in Fort Wayne. And so for every quadrangle they print this on here so that you know the exact amount of correction for your compass. And most good quality compasses like the Sunto compass I'm using have a way that you can actually dial in that correction with a tiny little screw. You see that little brass screw there? You turn that tiny little brass screw and it dials in the correction on the scale that you see there. And I've already got this one set for that five and a half degrees west correction for Fort Wayne since it's the area that I mostly use this in. It even comes with a nice little screwdriver attached to the lanyard for you. So that's interesting information to have. A lot of people don't realize that about how magnetic compasses work. The other thing that's interesting too is that um, you don't want to use an old map for this because the magnetic north pole it moves. It's not in the same location every year. It's moved over 1,500 miles in the last 100 years. And it's still moving today. It moves a few miles a year. So the exact amount of correction you need to put into your compass changes every year. And so it's important when you look at a topographic map that has that correction 
printed on it. Make sure that the map is no more than a couple years old because um, the amount of that it moves each year isn't all that much and it might not really affect your compass much, but after, you know, say when it's 10 years old, maybe enough that it's going to introduce a significant error. So this is the 2016 map and that's that's new enough to be accurate. Um, the, the purple lines I've got north-south here, those aren't something that come on the maps. I added those in Photoshop. And the reason I added those is to work with my compass. Um, that's not something you need if you're not using a magnetic compass, but if it's something you're interested in, I've, pre I've produced a file with the lines that you can drop in as a separate layer on top of the map in Photoshop if you want. And I'll put a download link for that file in the description for the video. So I think these are the great, the best maps that you can get, and the great thing is, as I said, they're free. They cost you no more than the cost of ink and paper to print them. And the cost of ink and paper is not much for these. Almost everything on the map is just white. I mean, you're really just getting the lines for the streets and stuff. There's not very much filled-in area on it, so it really costs very little ink. My book here that has, I've got, I'm not, I can't remember the exact number, but I printed over 200 of these maps that are in my, in this book. And the covers for the book is something I bought at Office Depot. Um, you basically use a three-hole punch on the top of the maps, and then these metal pieces here go through the holes to lock it in place. And you can open it up and add more stuff to it and take stuff out of it, too. It's, it's not something that's, once you put it together, it's permanent. You can, you can take it apart and add and subtract stuff from it and put it back together. These aren't very expensive. A pack of two of them, I think, was $12 for the covers. Um, the paper cost me $19 for 500 sheets. Um, I used about thirty dollars worth of ink to print these, so um, I used less than half the paper. So maybe nine dollars worth of paper, thirty dollars worth of ink, um, six dollars for the cover. So what, maybe fifty bucks or so to print two hundred maps? That's a lot cheaper than anything you're going to be able to buy commercially. So now that I've showed you the maps, um, let's go up to the computer and I'll show you how to download them. Okay, here's the website where you download the topographic maps from the U.S. Geological Survey. Um, when you first go to the website, and I'll put the uh, link in the description for the video so that you can click to it, um, you're going to see a map of the United States, and then you're going to see several different options on the sides here and on the top. The first thing you want to do is go to the top area above the map and click where it says Map Indices. And you'll see there's different types of maps available, depending on how big of an area you want the map to cover. Um, there's the one degree maps, which cover an area one, one degree of longitude wide. Um, the 15 minute ones cover a smaller area. One degree of longitude can be divided into 60 minutes. That's a, how an angle is subdivided. And so you see the little boxes here. Each one represents a separate map you can download. We're going to go for the seven and a half minute ones, which are the most detailed. And this is zoomed in on an area of Nebraska, and you can see how many of these tiny little boxes there are for that state. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the map over to Indiana, where I live, because I don't want to download a map from Nebraska. I've never even been there. Um, let's go ahead and find a map where I live, or at least a place I would visit. Now, once we've uh, found the area that we want to download maps from, you need to come over here to the left side of the screen and there's different choices here. Under map you can choose US Topo which is the current versions of the maps and that's what you're going to want most likely. Or you can choose historic topographic maps and that lets you download earlier versions of these maps. They, re they redo these maps every couple of years and update them and so you can actually go on here and you can download versions of these maps going back decades. The government's been making these maps for well over 100 years, and I, I know that I've seen ones going back to the 1940s and 1930s for some areas of Indiana that are online here. Um, if you're interested in history and you want to see how things have changed over time, it can be interesting to download different versions of it going back several decades and comparing to the current versions and seeing what's changed. But because we're going to use these for finding photographic locations, and not getting ourselves lost when we go out and explore out in the country today, we want the current version, so we'll click US Topo. Um, now, we need to zoom in a little bit more and find the actual areas that we want to download. And if you zoom in close enough, you see that each of the little squares, the government calls these quadrangles, that's the, the area that each individual map covers, has a name. 
and the name is usually the name of a town or other geographic feature within that area. So I live in the city of Fort Wayne. You can see Fort Wayne is actually a pretty big city that covers several of these quadrangles. The Fort Wayne West and Fort Wayne East actually only cover about, I don't know, a third of the city. Um, you would, if you wanted to get the whole city, you'd need to get the Fort Wayne West, Fort Wayne East, Cedarville, Huntertown, and Arcola quadrangles, as well as the Austin one to get this little bit of the city down here. Um, now, if you if you only want to get one one map at a time, what you would do is you would choose this little little uh, drop point thing here, and then put it in the one that you want to download. So we'll download the Austin one. Now. If you wanted to download several maps at the same time, there's a way to do that easier. Um, and that's by taking the draw rectangle and basically uh, dragging over an area that you want to get maps from. So here I've selected eight different maps. Now once you've selected the ones you want, whether it's a single one or whether it's a group of them, you go up here to where it says Find Products, click it and it's going to search and then it's going to give you a list. And you can see each one says USGS, US Topo, 7.5 mana, minute map 4, and then it gives you the name of the quadrangle. So for Austin, for Zanesville, Fort Wayne West, Darkola, and so on. And because I've chosen a lot of them, I have to scroll down to see all of them. Now for each one, you'll see that there's options. The one that we want is the one that says download. Now, if you click the download link for each individual one, it's going to open up a second tab in your browser, and it's going to download. It's a PDF file, and it's going to open the PDF in that tab. I usually don't do that because it's very slow. It, it takes forever for it to open the browser. So what I do is I right-click the download link, and I choose Save Link As. Now, this is in Firefox on a Mac. If you're using a different browser, the actual wording may be different in the menu, but pretty much every browser has an option like this. We're going to choose Save Link As and you'll choose where you want to save it on your computer. Um, you can give it a name. The default names are just a string of numbers which really don't mean anything to me so what I'm going to do is rename it to the name of the quadrangle so I know which map I'm looking at when I open it later. And this is the Aussian one so we'll call it Aussian, hit save and it's going to save. And you would just do that for each of them in the list. You've got there's no way to make it download them all at once. You've got to go to each individual one. Um, but for right now, we really only need one for our example, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at that. Now here's where I've saved it. You can see the Aussian.pdf right here. And these are actually more than just a map. If you open these PDF files in Adobe Acrobat, which I'll do right now. It doesn't look that detailed right now because this is a map that when it's printed it's going to be 22 by 29 inches so you would have to use the magnifier and blow it up to see a better detail. But there's actually several different layers here. One layer is the uh, the map frame which is the actual map imagery itself. The map collar is the border stuff, the things that has all the, you know, the map legend and the scale and the name of the map and everything. Um, and then another one is the images layer. The images layer actually gives you a aerial photograph of the entire area covered by the map. And let's zoom in on that a bit and look at it. Now this is kind of hard to look at because you're seeing a photograph with the with all the topographic map features overlaid on it, the the, uh, um, the uh, contour lines for the land and all that. So if you want to look at just one thing, well, I'm going to take the map frame off so we can just see the picture. And it's kind of interesting to look at these, but I think that if you're really interested in looking at an aerial photograph, um, the pictures that are in, in uh, Google Maps or Google Earth are actually better for that. What I think the topographic maps are best for is the actual map itself, which are far more accurate and more detailed than any other maps I've ever found. 
Um, the photographs aren't as good, but the, but the maps are better. If you go to Google Maps, the pictures are better, but the maps aren't as good. So, we'll turn off the uh, images and turn the map back on. Now, when I print these, I actually print these out of Photoshop. And the reason I do that is because that allows me to resize them a lot easier so that I can make the smaller size version that fits on 11 by 17 paper. And it's also possible in Photoshop if you want to print the entire 22 by 29 inch map, but you don't have a big enough printer, you can, you can cut it up in Photoshop into smaller sections that you can print individually on a smaller printer and then tape together later. So I just wanted to open this up in Acrobat so you could see all the different layers that come with it. So you could see the photograph and you could see the, you could see the actual map itself. So I'm going to go ahead and just close Acrobat here because we don't need that anymore. And then now I'm going to open this in Photoshop. Now, when you try to open a PDF file in Photoshop, you get this little import PDF dialog box and it asks you some questions. It wants to know how big you want it to be. The size that's already filled in, and you can see it's 22.75 by 29 inches. That's the actual size of the PDF file. That's the size that the, the people who created it intended for it to be printed if you printed it full size. Uh, you can change that if you want to make it smaller. Um, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and leave it full size. You can choose resolution, how, how much resolution you want. I'm going to leave that at 300. That's the default for this. I'm going to keep it RGB color because we want it all to be in full color because different, different things that are on the map are rendered in different colors so that you can read the map easier. Um, bit depth should be 8 bit, that's fine. Um, now up here you see we have choices. You got pages, images, and 3D. Images will give you the the aerial photograph along with the map itself. I'm not really sure what the 3D objects does because I don't think there are any 3D objects in this map. I haven't tried it this so I may be wrong on that, but um, we're gonna leave, we're just gonna use pages. Now, something else you need to check here is it's going to say crop two, and there's going to be choices. Bounding box, media box, crop box, bleed box, trim box, and art box. Um, for these maps, you need to set it at media box. Um, if I remember correctly, when I first tra started doing these, if I chose bounding box, it gave a much larger border around it that wasn't necessary. Um, so the media box one gives you the correct border around it. Once you've got that chosen, click OK. And this is going to take a few seconds. It's, it's a slow process because this is a big file. The other file you see in the background while it's creating this, that's my that's my north my north-south um, orientation lines if you want to add those to the map yourself later. I have those on a separate file. Okay, here's our map. Now this is a this is rendered with a transparent background and if we zoom in we can see the contour lines and the other things the, there's rivers there's green areas show forested areas there's the highways it's hard to read we want to flatten this image so that the background will be white so we go to layer flatten image and there we go now you can read the map easy um, and there it is there's our complete um, map and if you want to, if you have a printer large enough to print at this size, um, and you want the full size print, you can print it like this. Now, if you uh, if you don't want to print the full size print, because as I showed you earlier, they're huge. If you want something that's easier to carry in your car, or something you can fold up and stick in your camera bag, um, I recommend printing them on 11 by 17 paper. That gives you one that's small enough that's easy to handle, but big enough that you can see, still see all the details in the map. And the way I did that is I wanted them to be printed exactly one half the size of the originals as far as linear lengths. And the reason for choosing that size, even though it makes it a little bit smaller than the 11 by 17 paper, is that it makes it possible for us to use the map scales. Because if we zoom in on the map scale down here at the bottom, it tells you here, you know, this much distance equals half a mile, and this much distance equals one mile that's on the full size map. Now if you if you make it a half size map like the ones I've showed you then you would simply double these numbers. So this distance shown on the scale when it says the half mile you would that would be one mile on the smaller maps because 
by making the, the small one exactly one half the size of the original, the scale is still usable if you do a little bit of math like that. If you made it an unusual size, then the scales would be worthless without a lot more complicated math to figure out you know, exactly how many miles or kilometers is represented by each centimeter or inch or whatever that you might measure on the map. And that can be useful if you want to know what kind of a distance there is between different things. So I like to, to do it in a way that keeps the map scale usable. So what we're going to do in order to um, print it that way, now there's two ways you can do this. One way is that you can, when we when you originally open the PDF file, where it asked what size we wanted it to open, we could have changed the size there and opened it the smaller size to begin with. But since we've already opened it, I'm going to do it in the image size dialog box. And like I said, I want the I want the lengths to be one half what they were original. And so we see here that the um, height is 29 inches and the width is 22.75. Um, figuring out half of 22.75 is kind of a pain, so because it's not an even number, so we'll do the 29. Half of 29 inches would be 14 and a half inches. So we'll type in 14.5 and we'll see that the width automatically changed to the correct amount since the dimensions are locked as far as the, the ratios. And so we'll leave the 300 dpi resolution and click OK and hit fit screen again and it looks the same as it did before but it's now a smaller file so when we print it if you print it on 11 by 17 paper this will fit there on the paper if you print it centered on 11 by 14 paper you'll, or 11 by 17 paper that is you'll get you'll get that um, print out just like I've showed you with mine that you can carry with you easier. Now what about the uh, north-south grid lines that I put on my maps? I did that so I can use them with an orienteering compass and if you're interested in doing that I'll put a download link for my grid file which I have right here in the description for the video so that you can get this. And this is already resized and everything. Now this is sized for the full size um, for the full size one. So what you would want to do is you want to add this to it while it's full size and then reduce its size to make the smaller 11 by 17 ones if you wish to do that. Um, so here's how we do this. I'm going to go back here to our original and I'm going to undo my image size. I want to make it the full size again and then we need this and I'm going to pull it off here so that it's separate from the other one. Now you see I've got two layers here. One's the background which is just plain white and then the other is the layer with the actual lines on it. If we turn the background layer off we see that the line layer is actually transparent with just the lines on it. And that's what we want. We want it to be transparent so that you can see the map underneath the lines. And so we're going to take this layer and drag it over to the picture that has the map, to the file with the map. Now in order to make the grid lines line up perfectly, you want to hold down the shift key on your keyboard, hold it down the entire time while you grab the layer and pull it over and let it go on the map. And there you can see they've lined up perfectly with the edges of the map by doing it that way. And then once we've done all this, then you can save this. If you want to save the files as a as a uh, TIFF file or a PSD file, so that you can keep it with the layers there, you can do that, or you can flatten it and save it as a TIFF or a PSD or even a JPEG. Um, and then you can print it, or you can resize it to make the smaller size version if you want. So that's pretty much all there is to it as far as getting the maps and then then opening opening them up in Photoshop and resizing them to print if you want to do that, and adding the uh, north-south orientation lines if you need those as well. I think these maps are super useful to us. They're really the, they're really the most accurate, best quality maps I've ever found of, of rural areas in the United States. Um, none of the commercially made ones I've ever found anywhere came anywhere close to having the kind of detail and the kind of accuracy that these do. And the great thing is they're totally 100% free. You can download every single one of them for the entire country if you want, if you have the time and the computer storage space to do so. And there are a lot of them. Indiana is not, you know, a particularly large state geographically, but there's over 300 of these quadrangles just to cover my state. And so I've actually only downloaded maybe a third of them, just the areas of the state that I've visited and spent a lot of time photographing in. The others I'll get if I if I ever venture into those areas of the state, I'll go and download them. But um, 
you can download one of them or you can download every one if you've got the time to do it. And, never, and none of them cost you anything except the cost of paper and ink to print them yourself.